If you're that guy that's going to be like, dude, I'll buy one, then you should be applying for those dates. If you have an adventuresome spirit and a good pair of backpack and legs, it is the last vestige that allows you to do that. It's a very cool opportunity. Yeah, I'd sleep in a room with a grizzly before I'd swim in the ocean with one shark. It was called the Conflict Reduction Goat Hunt. That year, I think they gave six tags and only two people were successful. And one of them was my 12-year-old boy. Every sheep hunt in these states has extremely high success, you know, 80 to 100%. There's no more well-managed species, in my opinion, in North America than sheep. Hey guys, this is Robert Hanneman with The Hunt Full Magazine, and I'm excited to be here today with The Wild Initiative. Put down your latte and pull on your boots. I would rest at peace for eternity if my legacy was that I made a positive influence on the non-hunting public about what hunters are and what hunting is. I finally got my buck on our last real day of hunting. So a pro-hunting organization is voting against hunting. And that says anti-hunting to me. There was a year straight where I was averaging up to 200 death threats a day. And I hugged it. Like, I just wanted to hug a bear. It's proven that the average steak in a grocery store touches 50 to 100 hands and machines. And we're putting that into our body. Hey, y'all, Cable Smith, host of the Lone Star Outdoors show here. This is Adam Weatherby. I'm Corey Jacobson with Elk 101. This is Christy Titus. Hey, folks, this is John Bear. You're listening to The Wild Initiative. Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of The Wild Initiative, brought to you as part of the Waypoint Outdoor Collective. All right, y'all, so getting on to today's episode. He's back. I've got Jared Lyle of Hunt and Fool, as promised, and along with him, we have professional hunt advisor with Hunt and Fool, Robert Hanneman. Uh, excited to follow up. Uh, as y'all have been listening, we just recently did the North American big game draw kind of idiot's guide episode. I don't know. I, I know the guy asking questions was an idiot, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, excited to do this follow-up. Uh, we're going to be doing some more of these species specific episodes. So keep an eye out for them today. Excited to be chatting with these guys uh, about sheep and goats. So uh Start taking notes, uh, getting prepared to open up your wallets. And <laughs> <laughs> um, so really, you know, let's uh, let's just hop right into it. You know, you guys offer a service where people can call in and talk to a hunt advisor. And you know what, Robert, I'm calling in and I'm as- and I'm telling you, I want to start hunting sheep. What the heck? Where do I where do I start? Well, first, I got to ask you, are you married to a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> definitely not definitely okay not. well then we're then we're gonna have to draw some tags not just buy tags but um <laughs> you know with sheep hunting um as a non-resident in most of these western states your odds are going to be less than one percent so you know when i tell guys you know about sheep hunting is one of those things you're going to apply your whole life and you hope to draw you may never draw but if you don't try, you're never going to draw. It's just like you see a pretty girl and you walk up to her and you don't say anything. You don't have a chance. If you walk up and ask her to maybe go to dinner, you might have a 1% chance. You're a guy that probably <laughs> should be applying for sheep tags. Whoa, whoa. What are you, what are you saying about me right now? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> no, Robert was a one percenter with his lovely wife, Amy. So he, he, well, he believes in the odds. Uh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think I've got at least a 1.5% chance. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, well, you're better looking and younger than I am, so <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But uh, no, if I could just one second, I'll, I'll brag on Robert a little bit because I know he won't brag on himself. But, you know, on an average year, Robert takes probably close to 5,000 phone calls in personal hunt consultations on behalf of Hunt and Fool. And a big portion of those have the, you know, how my how can I hunt wild sheep as a portion of the call. And so I wanted Robert to join us because I don't think anybody's more qualified to talk about it than him. And uh, yeah, like Robert said, unfortunately, the draw odds are rough and quite frankly, guaranteed tags. You know, if you look at just like Rocky Mountain Bighorn sheep tags in 2020 that sold at auction and or various guaranteed, you know, where you can write a big check and get them, uh, you know, they ran from like $75,000 for a tag up to $312,000 for a single wild sheep tag for a guaranteed conservation um, of the ones we kept track of last year. So um, again, that's why Robert asked if you were married to a doctor right out of the gate. Yeah, I tell you, those numbers just make my stomach like turn. (laughs) (laughs) 
But the cool thing is, is by applying, you can draw those same tags that guys are spending that kind of money on. So you can have the same experience. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And that's what we are here to talk about. Well, awesome. So when I get a call from someone and says, hey, I want to hunt sheep, the first question I ask them is, where do you live? Because if you live in a state that has sheep, typically that's going to be your best odds of drawing sheep. So they really want to focus on their home state and we'll help them through that. If they're not living in a state that has sheep, you know, the the West has draw tags and in all the the states in the West and all of them have an application period. And that's the one awesome thing about the Hunt and Full magazine. You know, we've been in business since 1996. And, uh, you know, if you have followed that, you're in one of those guys that has lots of points. And I know you and Jared talked about points, bonus points, preference points in the last podcast. So we won't really get into that other than what kind of points they have. But, you know, there's really only one option if you want to you know, a draw sheep tag. And that's to apply everywhere you can. Here's a perfect example. You live in Bozeman. So you're going to apply for Montana. So you're just applying for Montana and you are putting your name in the hat one time a year. So you're a resident. So pretty good odds, but not great odds, 1% type odds, but you're getting one application a year in for the sheep game. Now, if you're like me and Jared, maybe you're putting in for 14 states and then you're doing another 14 or 15 raffles on that. So we're doing 30 times what you are a year. So it really comes down to, it's a game that if you want to go all in on sheep, we recommend applying for most of the states that offer sheep tags. Um, You know, Jared can break down some of the numbers and what it costs, but I'm a perfect example. I'm 41 years old. I've been applying for 20 years or more in most of these tags. I have never personally drawn a sheep tag, but I've been on a tremendous amount of hunts, you know, inviting myself along and I've drawn every other tag that's, that's possible. So I just know if I live long enough, I'm going to draw a sheep tag. So it's kind of one of those things where you really got to go all in um, if you want to increase your odds of drawing a sheep tag, because like we said earlier, there is not a non-resident tag in the West with better than 1% odds. Yep. And, you know, one thing that helps me feel a little bit better about all of those applications that I send out, all those rejection letters I get back every year saying I, I was unsuccessful in the draw again, uh, is I do consider that money, you know, essentially a donation to conservation. And I think that's one thing you kind of got to get between your ears ahead of time. We take a lot of calls from people who are like, oh, man, well, you know, I, I never want to play this game if the odds are that terrible. And that's totally fine. Obviously, our job is to help you understand you know, what it's going to cost and what your odds look like out there in the draw pool. But at the end of the day, I actually am pretty okay with the fact that I spend a couple thousand dollars a year in non-refundable money that goes to state uh, big game conservation through the state game and fish commissions and, and their, and their application and tag and license program. So it helps me a little bit. I don't know, maybe that just helps me sleep at night, but that is one way to look at it. If you get into this. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more on that. And I mean, the money goes to a great cause, especially the raffles that usually goes directly to sheep on the ground. You know, the state agencies, you know, when we're buying their licenses, you know, especially guys like me and Jared. Yeah, we want to hunt sheep as much as everyone else, but we want to take advantage of those other species. And when you get into some of these states and you have to maybe buy that hunting license to apply for sheep, it's really not that expensive to tack on some other species while you're at it. So, um, you know, if there's something you want to hunt that's in that state other than sheep, we always kind of recommend our guys to look at those as well. But, um, you know, a perfect example, I tell guys this all the time, if you're 40 years old and you're starting today applying for sheep across the West, you may never draw a tag. If you're 20 years old and you go full tilt, you'll probably end up with one tag. But um, just in the 20, 25 years I've been applying, the odds have just become dramatically worse because everyone's excited to hunt sheep. And again, you know, the the thing with sheep, they're awesome, but you know, let's reverse the roles and say there's, you know, just a handful of mule deer throughout the West there's sheep everywhere. We'd all be talking about mule deer this way. So I think it's that thing that it's on such a pedestal because there's so few of them that the demand is there and, and we're all just, you know, trying to fulfill a lifelong dream you know, putting a sheep on the wall. And then there's people recording podcasts and just telling everyone how to draw sheep tags. Jeez. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So you're mentioning the best option is, is really, I mean, to try and draw in your home state, provided your home state offers sheep tags. Um, You know, that might be a good place to start. So like what, what states are we looking at? 
So let's just take, for example, we'll start, we'll just kind of go through the West real quick. You know, Washington has random tags that are available for non-residents and residents, Oregon, you know, California, um, Nevada. You're going to get, once you hit that kind of Nevada, Utah line, you're in Arizona, New Mexico, you're typically into more desert sheep than Rockies. North of there, you're typically more into Rockies. Now there is Rockies in Arizona, New Mexico as well. So, you know, there's two different kinds of sheep that we have the ability to hunt here in the West. Um, so, I mean, that's when guys start applying, you know, you can look at in certain states, you can apply for bull sheep. Like I like Nevada. I buy my license. I can put in for two different sheep tags. You know, I can do the same thing in Utah. Um, but then when I look at, you know, say um, Colorado, I've got to pick one or the other. So, I mean, there's, there's states to key on that, you know, have better odds and states that don't. You look at California, they're going to give one to two tags are potentially available for non-residents, not guaranteed, but are up to, they can draw two tags as a non-resident. Where you look at Nevada, Nevada is going to give 30 plus desert tags, another six California bighorn sheep tags, which is a subspecies of the Rockies. So that state's setting aside 36 tags just for non-residents, but California isn't, you know? And so when I start looking at things like that, those are the states that I'm going to key in on is like, man, Nevada's given a lot of tags, you know, Oregon's maybe going to give six, you know, Washington is a free for all. So I mean, residents, non-residents are all equal. So I look at the states that are giving the most amount of sheep tags and that's kind of where I start, you know, my priority of where I'm applying to, you know, because if you got a hunt budget, so you only have so much money, you want to go for the states that have the most tags, best opportunity first, and then work your way down to the ones that you may, you know, don't have great opportunity, like, say, California or Washington. Yep. Gotcha. So again, you know, I'm calling in and, and we kind of talked through some of the states you know, where are we looking? Where's the, where's this, this best opportunity? You, you talked a bit about Nevada. Um, what am I looking at? Maybe is my order of priority. Yeah. So, you know, for me, the number one state I'm going to recommend for guys is Nevada um, just because of the sheer number of tags. Now, before we go too deep into the states I'd recommend, we'll just talk about some of the different options that are available. So we'll say, we'll look at Montana, you know, Montana's got a set aside number of non-resident tags, uh, units that have more than 10 tags are going to have a non-resident tag every year, like the Missouri breaks world famous to kill giant Rams in there. Um, but the rest of Montana is no sleeper either. I mean, every unit in Montana has got, you know, book Ram potential, maybe not some of the unlimiteds, but for the most part it does. Um, you know, so there's a state, lots of sheep, healthy population, but in everybody's equal. I mean, it's a bonus point system. So a 12 year old non-resident with no points could draw or a guy that's sitting on max points could draw. When we step down to a state like Wyoming, Wyoming's a little different. They gave, I think, 44 sheep tags last year, 40 of those 44, or maybe it was, they gave 46 and 40 of the 46 went to people with the max points. So those guys that got in on this system 20 years ago, true preference point system, those are the guys drawn 75% of the tags. So if you're not in that 20 plus point range in Wyoming, you're fighting with me and you and Jared and everybody else, you know, for those last, you know, six random tags. You know, when you get to states like Colorado, you got to give them money for three years before your name even goes in the hat. So your fourth year name's actually going in the hat. Colorado is cool because they do offer non-resident archery sheep tags and they offer one desert tag and then Rocky tags as well. Rifle um, go down further to New Mexico. New Mexico sets aside a, uh, a very slim number of tags to for us in the desert and Rocky, but they have some great sheep down there. There's no bonus points. So say I've been applying for New Mexico for 30 years. This is your first year. We're going to be equal. So, I mean, it's a great state. You got to upfront a lot of money, but uh, this is where that, you know, Dr. Wife would come in handy with a big credit card. <laughs> you know, you step over to Arizona and Arizona's a cool state because they're going to give 20% of those tags to the guys with most points. And then 80% are going to go random. Well, most guys with max points in Arizona are residents. So they eat up that big portion of tags that are in the max point pool. So we're fighting for those, say, 10 random tags. And, um, you know, every year, you know, we have a handful of handful members that draw those tags. Um, last year, my 15-year-old son pulled a desert sheep tag down there. We went down, had an awesome experience, do it yourself, you know, right down on the essentially Mexican border. You know, you go just north of there into Utah, you know, they have rocky tags and desert tags. They give, you know, three to four for each species, long draw odds, 
but then you step over like Nevada, we talked about, we give 30 desert, 30 plus deserts, other six, you know, California bighorn, which is kind of a subspecies of the Rockies. It counts as towards your slam as a Rocky. You step down to California, again, up to two non-resident desert tags. A lot of years, non-residents don't draw a tag because it's kind of like Washington and, and everyone's equal. So the residents can take all the tags if they get lucky and draw those. And some years they do. You go north of that to Oregon, we got one Rocky unit that we're allowed to apply for as a non-resident. I think there's four or five California uh, bighorn sheep units that we can apply for. There's no preference points. It's kind of like New Mexico. That's a state you can just apply for, um, you know, and if you get lucky and draw, you, you got the same odds as a guy like me. So a guy that's way behind the point curve, maybe some of these states like that that don't have point systems are good. Circle back to Idaho. I like Idaho. They make you up front the money, make you buy your hunting license. But if you're applying for sheep, you can't apply for anything else. Can't do moose, can't do goat. You're all in on sheep. Um, and there's no bonus points. So again, everybody's equal. You know, some years I'll throw in for sheep. Other years I'll, I'll do other things. You look at, you know, Washington and it's expensive to apply there. The odds are long. The point system is fairly, you know, um, established, you know, it's mature. So starting out, you got a long odds of drawing, but if you want to throw a little bit of money at it, you know, there's a chance to draw on a tag there. Um, Texas, uh, everybody should be applying for Texas. It's $10. You draw the tag. There's only one desert sheet tag. You know, the fishing game is going to guide you on that hunt. So that's a quick down and dirty of a lot of the states, um, you know, and, and if a guy's just starting out and he's, you know, kind of, you know, wanting to try to, you know, cheat a tag quick, you know, instead of getting in these mature point systems, New Mexico, Idaho, Oregon, you know, those are ones where there's no points. And, uh, you know, some guys will look at those odds and, you know, on average, I say one in 300 to one in 500 is kind of what your odds are for some of those. Some years they're as good as one in 250, some years they're worse. But I tell guys, you know, imagine you're at a banquet, Elk Foundation, Sheep Foundation, something, I've had a few beers, and uh, all of a sudden the announcer is like, hey, we're giving 400 tickets right now for a desert sheep hunt or a Rocky Mountain sheep hunt. You know, they're 250 bucks a piece. If you're that guy that's going to be like, dude, I'll buy one, then you should be applying for those states. Mm -hmm. If you're that guy that's like, man, I don't know, I'm not going to do well, then I don't think those states are probably you know, in it for you, maybe you're that guy that needs that security of at least I'm building points, makes me feel better about spending my money. Then look at some of these other states, you know, and then if you're tough as nails and there's always the unlimiteds in Montana, if you want to get down and dirty and go sleep with grizzlies, you know, they kill a lot of rams there every year. <laughs> so actually tell me, uh, tell me a little bit of this and me being selfish because I'm here in Montana. Tell me about the unlimiteds in Montana. You would die. <laughs> <laughs> but guys like me and jared went in there and tore that country up quite a bit um you know it's a it's a special thing you know montana has the unlimited sheep areas um this is a throwback due to the biologist in there he's been there for like 35 years and he's fought to keep this this way so there's five units in montana which you can buy a sheep tag on residents 1250 bucks residents like me and you 125 Jared's going to drop 1250 because he left the state. But, um, you know, you can pick one of those five units. You have to commit to your tag by May 1st. And then there's a, essentially a quota on all those units. Um, one of them has an early season, September 1st through the 10th. Um, one of them's got, um, you know, one that's going to run the 15th through like October 31st, sheep leaving the park. And three units are going to go September 15th to um, essentially whenever Montana's general season ends, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. These units... Um, some of the sheep live in the units. Some of the sheep wander back and forth from Yellowstone Park. They're all essentially around the park. And um, you buy a sheep tag and you go hunting. You know, you want to check the quota. Once two rams are killed, they close the unit with a 48-hour um, closure. But more than two rams can be harvested. This year in uh, 501, they actually killed six rams. First time ever. Went way over the quota. Um, so essentially... Once that two ram, the second ram has been killed, fishing game starts the clock. 48 hours later, the season closes. Typically, you know, like 500, 501, you're going to get a couple of weeks out of them. 502, you know, that's more over um, kind of by Red Lodge. And, you know, those sheep are wandering out of Wyoming for the most part. So it typically stays open late. But there's a lot of guys that take advantage of this. You know, you're talking, you know, there's probably upwards of 300 to 500 tags sold every year. It varies. 
Some guys don't actually hunt them. Some guys do, but you know, every year they're killing eight to 10 rams out of those units. So we have a lot of members that just go and hunt those unlimited and being a Montana resident, you know, it's kind of hard not to buy a $125 tag and have it in your pocket yeah. just in case you're over there. Well, shoot. And I become a Montana officially become a Montana resident according to fish and game at the end of April. So uh, that timing works out real nice. <laughs> <laughs> one, thing, one thing I'll say about the unlimited too is, you know, if you have a high level, like Robert's not joking about sleeping with the grizzly bears, they, they all are kind of bear rich, if you will. But if you have an adventuresome spirit and a good pair of backpacking legs and just a desire to go see wild country and actually have a wild sheep tag in your pocket, it is the last vestige that allows you to do that. It's a very cool opportunity. Um, and it the country is incredibly beautiful. Again, to Robert's point, most of it sort of surrounds so, so a couple sides of Yellowstone Park. And yeah, it's, there's a reason Yellowstone's a national park. It's some of the prettiest country in the world. So it's kind of a a two for one, if you will, and if and when you do uh, go pursue that, it's a really cool opportunity. And Not this is one. I want to emphasize that it is tough, rugged country. Yeah, nope. I mean, it's it's one of those things where a lot of guys buy the tag. It looks great on paper. You know, they've researched it to death online. They show up at the trailhead. They're jacked. They literally look at the country from the trailhead, and they're so taken back where they may miss around the trailhead for a day or two, and then they go home. Like, I mean, it's, it's that big of country, you know, and, and it's, it's one of those cool things where I hate to say it, but it's probably not going to last. I'm sure there's going to come a point at some point where they just make it all a draw, but I hope they don't because it's something really special that Montana has had for a long time. And uh, the guy that founded this magazine killed a ram, you know, in one of the unlimited units, you know, way, way back in the day. So, I mean, there's been a lot of guys that have taken good rams out of that unit and, uh, or those units. And, uh, it's just really special. I mean, I have more respect for a guy that kills 160 inch ram out of the unlimited than a guy that shoots a 190 off the road in Montana in the breaks. <laughs> oh man. I think I know what I'm going to, going to be purchasing <laughs> come May. <laughs> um, Lord help me. It just sounds so awful. And for some reason that attracts me so, so very much. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a very cool place. You know, one thing we should talk about, too, is cost a little bit. Robert alluded to it earlier. I think, you know, Robert gave an excellent rundown on like the various states, the quantities of tags available, you know, all in. If if you assumed that non-residents got lucky and drew all the possible tags that they could possibly draw, like in 2019, there was 179 total tags in North America available through the draw to non-residents. Um, so it's not very many. That's why we get into these, you know, these tough draw situations that does exclude the unlimiteds, by the way, because again, to Robert's mm -hmm. point, they can sell as many of those tags as they want. But, um, you know, I think what I usually try to do when somebody asks me the question, well, you know, what's your budget, right? Is it, are you willing to spend 500 bucks a year starting to build a portfolio, you know, an application portfolio, um, a thousand bucks a year. And we work backwards from that number. And then the other really important piece of the pie is, are you already going, going to go somewhere else? Or do you already have a hunting license for that state? So, you know, I'll use my son, my oldest son, Jake. Um, I haven't done a great job of building him points all over because it's expensive. Um, and we should touch on youth here after this, but I didn't build him any sheep points in Nevada, but we drew a deer tag together this, this year, or I'm sorry, 2020, we drew a deer tag together. And so since he already had the hunting license, of course, I put in for California sheep and desert sheep because he was already going to go. The major sunk cost was in there. It was only a few extra dollars for each species to apply, throw his name in the hat. So that's always an important consideration. Are you going to go there anyway? And if you are, that might be the best year to go ahead and try, if at least if it's a state that has some random tags, to go ahead and add the extra marginal cost. But really for less than five five or 600 bucks a year, you're going to really struggle to, to get started period. Um, you know, just as an example, if you decided you wanted to build points in Arizona, which is a popular state with our members because it has multiple awesome species to hunt, right? Big deer, big elk, great sheep, Rockies and deserts, both, um, you know, you're into Arizona, a couple hundred bucks alone on an annual basis, North of $200, 
So you get a couple states like that and your $500 is gone, but it's a start, right? And so, you know, it's, it's like looking at it from a, what am I going to do anyway this year? And oh, by the way, let's add sheep because I'm already going to have some expense sunk there. It's from an overall budget point of view. And then the plus one that I think Robert, or maybe you alluded to earlier, Sam, where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm already applying for elk in this state. It's only 14 or 16 more dollars respectively to add sheep. Um, one thing I do want to really stress before we move off of that is, we hate it as hunt and fool advisors, hunt advisors, when people apply for points only for sheep. The odds are so terrible. Unless you're going to be like living in Kyrgyzstan and cannot make it under any circumstances, <laughs> throw your name in the hat to actually draw a tag because the odds are terrible. Clear your schedule. If you get lucky and draw a sheep tag, Clear your schedule. Don't don't just build points. That's that's a bad mistake. A lot of people. I want to clear. I want to clarify something there. Jared said that that upsets us here in the office when guys apply for points only for sheep. It is true unless you were going to apply for the unit we were applying for. Then we don't <laughs> care if you did points only. <laughs> so the the moral of the story is put put in for sheep points. Only if it's in the unit that uh, Robert and Jared are hunting in. That <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> no. And uh, also uh, tell your fiance you have to push back the wedding and uh, quit your job if you draw a sheep tag is also the moral of the story. Or just put a wealthy fiance. I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's, that's the win-win right there. That is true. And And like what Jared said, you know, like with Arizona, Nevada, Utah, you know, those are your long-term states. Those are the states like I'm going to set aside, you know, five, 600 bucks a year. And I'm going to, you know, apply for the next 20 years to try to draw sheep tag. Well, Arizona and Nevada would probably be two of my top states. If Thanks. you're in that, that guy, that's just like, and I'm not in this for the long term. I just want to, you know, have the best odds of shooting for a tag. That's when you start seeing your New Mexico, um, you know, your Idaho, your Oregon, maybe your Colorado desert sheep, you know, stuff like that, that has no uh, draw, or excuse me, has no points and everyone's equal. You know, those are not your long-term states. Like I know, like I'm going to put in for Arizona every year. I'm going to put in for Nevada every year. These states where I've established points, you know, Montana, things like that. But then, you know, if I have some extra money this year, you know, I'm probably going to go New Mexico, Oregon, Idaho, those kind of states. But then if, something happens and I got something comes up and I'm tight on cash for my application budgets. Those are the States I'm going to cut because it doesn't put me behind the curve. If I miss New Mexico this year, next year, I'm still equal with everybody else. Yep. It's funny. I think I've actually done that without thinking about it. Like very subconsciously when I'm, when I am applying every year and it is a tight year, I'm like, or I draw something and I'm like, ah, I just want to apply for Mexico. And like, I didn't, I didn't sit and think like, okay, yeah, that's because I need points in here, but I won't be falling behind if I don't draw Mexico, New Mexico. And it's been, I think a subconscious thing I've done over the past couple of years. Uh, and it's, I'm kind of dang proud of myself that I did that. I'm just pat, <laughs> patting myself on the back here. Yep, that's a smart <laughs> so we definitely kind of went through those states, a general budget. And again, that, you know, five, $600 a year budget, that you're not looking at like five hundred, five six hundred dollars a year, and then you know doubling that for applying for elk, or and then adding that on for a lot of the times. If you're smart with your budget, just reminding people, we touched on this in the last episode. If you want to be smart with your budget, and you're applying in a lot of these states, like you said, Arizona, where you have to buy the license up front, there's a large bulk of your cost right there. So you can apply if you're applying for multiple species. It may it it makes sense in those same states and it's utilizing your budget a lot more efficiently. I mean, heck the way I do it. And this is just me. I go in and half of the time you have the whole list of species you can apply for there. And they got all the check boxes next to them. And it's like $15. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll add that one. And I'll add that one. And I'll add that one. And, I mean, yeah, it definitely does add up, but you know, look at what's available in the state. You know, you're applying for sheep somewhere look at what else is available in the state because you know it may just give you better opportunity later for those other species as well so yeah no here's one other angle that that i want to talk about this is you know i've had this call a couple times and the guy's like hey listen i've got 300 bucks 
I want to apply for as many sheep tags as I can. And I kind of sometimes discourage that guy from applying in the draw. And I just tell him to go raffle because, you know, New Mexico's got two sheep tags, the raffles, you know, most of these raffles are anywhere between five and $35. So Texas is $10, New Mexico times two fifty. you know, Arizona's got the $25, I believe it's $25 for the sheep raffle. Nevada's got dream tags, which where they give away a couple of the silver state tag. Um, California has a, you know, sheep tag. that's like $5 and 80 cents. Um, Colorado has a raffle. Wyoming has the $10 raffles, the $30 trifecta. Montana's got $5 raffles. You know, Idaho's got the $20, you know, raffle. One of our Huntful members drew that last year, kill a giant ram and, you know, Hell's Canyon, Oregon's got, I think it's $11, Washington's 20. So, you know, I'm not, you know, wealthy man. Uh, I mean, so I work for the Huntful. Fools. Jared doesn't give me that much money. And, uh, <laughs> So I downhill too. (laughs) Yeah. So I personally want to have my name in every hat possible. So I don't drop hundreds of dollars in each of those States, but I have at least one raffle ticket in every one of those I just talked about. And then you have like your full curl society and, you know, a lot of different sheep, um, uh, you know, different like you know the idaho wild sheep or the different wild sheep societies will offer off maybe a doll hunter stone hunt a lot of times these raffle tickets are you know under 20 bucks so that's just another way for someone that maybe only has 300 bucks doesn't want to necessarily spend so much on a hunting license and just kind of wants to throw his name out there odds are terrible but you know that guy could be in another 15 draws for you know two three hundred bucks so just mm-hmm. you know I add that on top of mine, but I mean, there's just, like I said, there's, if you want to hunt sheep, you got to have your name in every hat that's, that's available. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know how the math exactly works on that, but you know, it, it kind of makes me want to call my, my brother-in-law is a math teacher and ask him, but it's like, you know, you got a 1% chance and you put in for a 1% chance 20 times, you know, you don't suddenly have a 20% chance of drawing the tag. Well, and 1% is on the upper end. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these yeah. cheaper point zero zero, you know, three or, you know, something with guy just starting with no mm-hmm. points. But it definitely, you know, having your name in the hat that many times definitely increases your odds uh, up, up beyond just that, you know, point zero zero one percent or or whatever it happens to be. But uh, so, you know, we talked about estates, we've talked about budgeting, uh, we talked, you know, about some different strategies. Uh, you mentioned uh, youth tags. Yeah, so there's some really cool opportunities. Um, New Mexico is really one of the only states that sets aside a youth tag. Um, But most of these states are going to give youth a cheaper license. You know, like Arizona, you know, I think it's $150 for your hunting license. A kid, it's only five bucks. So for $20 total, you could put a kid in and be building in points in Arizona. You know, so Utah, Oregon, you know, Idaho, these all have youth hunting licenses, Nevada. So, you know, that say five to $700 that me or you would be uh, putting out there. If your kid was in that youth category, you may be able to do the same thing for, you know, a third of the price, just because these states are, are giving youth a discount for the hunting license cost. The application costs still going to be the same, but they get that discount for, you know, the, the youth hunting cost. In some states, even like Montana, um, you know, if you have a kid that's, uh, you know, essentially been born, you can start building that kid points in Montana. So when that kid turns 12, he's old enough to apply, he can have a dozen points. So, I mean, you know, especially for a resident of Montana, but there's, there's definitely different states out there. Um, there's a really cool youth hunting article we did a couple of years ago. If you, if you Google um, hunt full youth application strategies, I believe it'll come up, but it's kind of like if your kid's under 12, really all the options that are out there and available for him. And then if they're over 12, they essentially have the same options that we do applying as adults. So that's, I mean, that's the, I think that's one of the cool things right there, especially, you know, if you're trying to get your kid into hunting and that's, that's a good point just across the board is, um, I mean, are there any States that don't allow youth that, that have point bonus points or preference points that don't allow youth to effectively continue those over into, you know, once they turn 18? No, all, all of them are going to roll right over to adult points. Um, you know, and then, and then you can build on them from there. None, none, my luck, my kid would probably burn them on a stupid unit, but uh, <laughs> I digress. Well, I don't think there's any stupid sheep units. <laughs> well, yeah, do a sheep for sure. Uh, what are you going to say? Well, I was going to talk about, you know, Washington. That's one state that we really recommend. 
if you have a kid that falls in the youth category to be applying for, um, it, you know, I think it's three dollars and eighty cents. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jared. For them to apply for sheep over there, and then if they draw the tag, it's only fifty five dollars, even as a non resident. So um, I believe it's fifteen or sixteen when they become an adult in that state. But from the time they have their hunting license or their hunter ed, and they're old enough till the time that that time frame is, we recommend every kid be applying for Washington just because it's so dirt cheap. Um, you know, and you never know; the odds are horrible, but someone could draw. That would be, that's, that's a very good tip right there. If only the adult prices were like that. Um, but <laughs> awesome. Um, so is there anything, uh, anything about sheep that we really haven't covered for somebody that, that wants to, wants to start their application plan? I feel like we've given them a lot of, a lot of direction, a lot of options, uh, places, places to start applying you know based on their budget and and where they live is there anything else uh that we maybe haven't haven't discussed i think that robert and i should each have to pick like our top three states that have a point system if you were at zero points today like robert and i can each say all right these are the three states with point systems we would apply in and then maybe one state our top choice for the random i think we could do that that'd be interesting maybe but before we do that the one thing i do want to mention we talked about before we started this podcast is sheep hunting is honestly all about the experience. Robert's been on a bunch of sheep hunts. I've been on a bunch of sheep hunts only because we say yes, whenever we get a chance to go, because it's such an incredible habitat that they live in the experience or whatever else. So now that we've discouraged all of your listeners <laughs> about how bad the draws are and how the cost is going to be and all that, I would encourage, you know, if you're, if you have the sheep bug, test it you know, between with social media being what it is today. Um, if you're really passionate about it, most people will never turn down an eager, excited person that wants to come along and run a spotter, run a video camera, um, sleep on a different ridge to try to glass rams up for you. It's truly a once in a lifetime experience for most people that draw a sheep tag and they almost always say yes to extra help. And because it is such an experiential hunt, I encourage people to to go sheep hunting without a tag, not to poach one, but to be a part of someone who has a legal tag. So I would I would advise you know listeners to to pursue that. I totally agree with what Jared said there. You know, invite yourself on every sheep hunt you have, um, especially you know if you're a quality guy or gal and you have good optics and and you can go. I mean, you're going to be able to get yourself on some sheep hunts, um, and that's how you learn. And you know, Jared nailed the head, nailed it on the head. Um, big thing is, you know, let's talk about success. Most every sheep hunt in these states is has extremely high success you know 80 to 100 percent there's no more well-managed species in my opinion in north america than sheep i mean there's more money thrown at them you know there's more sheep that are collared you know and, and they're very very well researched you know they, they they don't give a lot of tags you know they want everyone to have a quality experience so when you draw a sheep tag and you get lucky and draw one don't be worried about not filling your tag i mean yes there is a few handful of you know brutal sheep hunts in the West, but for the most part, they're not. So, you know, don't worry about, you know, don't be stressed out about killing a ram or not killing a ram. And a lot of guys will go in and shoot the first ram they see. And sometimes that can be a mistake because judging sheep can be really difficult. You could have full, four rams that are all full curl standing next to each other. And one's got, you know, a two inch bigger base than the rest of them. That ram's going to score 16 inches more the way that the Boone and Crockett scoring is set up. So it's not like, you know, fairly easy to tell the difference between a 350 bull and a 280 bull for sheep it's a little bit tougher so a lot of guys they draw these to eggs they are once in a lifetime tags and they're you know they want to make sure they have someone with them that's educated enough to help them kill the ram of their dreams so that's why you see i think a lot of guys hire outfitters when you're draw a sheep tag because you know you're probably not going to have this opportunity again you want to make the most of it and you want someone there that's going to let you know is this the quality ram or not and uh, that's one thing that i know we help out a ton of people every year on is you know there's you know a lot of hunting full members you know of those 179 sheep tags jared was talking about i bet 
we talk to 40 or 50 guys a year, handful members that draw sheep tags. And, you know, we don't just send them to any outfitter. We want to make sure they have a great experience. So, you know, that is one thing that we really, really stru- you know, stress to guys. If you do draw sheep tag, and if you're not a handful member, give us a call and let us help you out, you know, picking that right outfitter because we don't want to see you waste your opportunity. And we want to make sure, you know, you get the, the best RAM that is available for you because, again, these tags don't come around very often. Yeah, no, great point. All right. So if uh, somebody's looking to kind of build their strategy, start building points, but then also be thrown in, like you said, for a unit that they may have a chance to draw that year, let's let's hear your three point building states and then your your number one uh, number one random draw state. Okay, I'll go first. I'm going to go Arizona, Montana, and Nevada are going to be my three point building states. And the reason I choose those, Arizona, I'm also applying for elk. Um, it's got over-the-counter archery coos deer and mule deer late season hunts. In fact, I'm getting ready to go down next week to ca- chase a coos deer around anyway. So the hunting license already is going towards something I can actually go hunt every year. The reason I choose Montana is because it's a standalone application. I don't have to front all the fees. It's not that expensive. And honestly, the biggest sheep in the West come out of Montana consistently. And then the reason I choose Nevada is like Robert said earlier, it's not only a plus one for me, I'm chasing elk tags and and phenomenal mule deer tags in addition to the, the two species of sheep, uh, but they also issue a ton of non-resident tags. So those are my three point building states. And my random state is Idaho. You know, Robert's going to argue I'm a lifetime Idaho license holder. So Robert's going to throw that probably in front of me a little bit. <laughs> but I usually try to hunt Idaho. Even if I wasn't a lifetime, I would try to hunt Idaho very regularly. And so again, I've already got the sunk cost of the license. And so I'm going to go in the draw and try to draw a sheep tag. Well, and Idaho is also an awesome over the counter spot for elk as well. Um, and so, you know, it's for guys just, just getting started in hunting that may also want to hunt elk. Idaho is always a, a good option too. So again, you know, using your budget wisely. Yeah. Bears, deer, like there's a lot of options in Idaho. Um, so it's worth it to me, but that'd be my, my pick for somebody who's just getting started. All right, Robert. My picks are going to be very similar to Jared's. That's why he went first. He went the same thing. <laughs> so Nevada is going to be my number one pick. I was born and raised there. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, more sheep tags given in Nevada than essentially anywhere else. They have three subspecies of sheep. They actually have a Rocky Mountain bighorn up in the northeast portion of the state. Um, that population is, is you know, they're, they're given, you know, in that five to eight tags a year. Once it gets over 10 tags, they'll allow non-residents to apply for that. And you could be even applying for three sheep tags there. So Nevada is going to be my number one state. Um, you know, tons of public land, you know, great opportunity for sheep, you know, and I love being in the desert. Um, number two is going to be Arizona, kind of what Jared said, um, got lucky. You know, my son killed a great ram down there. There's some units that have better odds because, you know, in Arizona, you only get to put in for two choices where in Nevada, you get five. So a lot of guys don't want to hunt that Mexico border country due to everything that's going on there. Um, so that's where I took my 15 year old boy, probably not the smartest, but killed a great <laughs> ram, you know, and, uh, yeah, we've seen, you know, everything you probably run into down there. So that would be my you know, my second choice and there. So Nevada, I have my California sheep points, my desert sheep points. And then when Rocky's available, Rocky points in Arizona, your points are just sheep points. So I could put in for desert or I could put in for Rocky and I could put in for both. My first choice could be desert. Second choice could be Rocky. Uh, I'm more after desert. So I go both there. So that's going to be my second state. Um, my third state is going to be just like he said, Montana. Um, and it's just because of the giant rams. You know, I've been here for a long time. Even the, the kind of units that most guys are like, man, that's a crappy unit. You're still killing 175, 180 inch rams. I mean, there was a lot of years where like 40% of the rams killed in Montana made Boone and Crockett. I've literally watched people make fun of people that killed 178 inch rams. Like, oh, <laughs> didn't even make 180. And it's like guys are I mean, die in Wyoming to kill 178 inch rams. So, you know, Montana is just the land of giant rams. So um, that's going to be, you know, my, uh, my third choice. Um, when it comes to a random draw, 
I can't choose one. So, I mean, I'm going to, I'm always going to apply for Oregon. I'm going to buy the license. You know, you know, my odds are going to fluctuate there. Wyoming this year changed it. You no longer have to buy that $150 point fee. So guys can apply a lot cheaper. You still upfront the money and your application fees, but you know, there's, you know, four random, four units that have random tags in there. And then uh, New Mexico, I mean, it's gosh, it's friggin' giant Rams down there, deserts and Rockies. Man, Texas is only 10 bucks. So I'll say everything but Idaho because Jared already said Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> Chicken. So this actually made me think of one more question. Um, application dates. So when do we have to have our sheep applications in for these uh, these states? You want to run through that, Jared? <laughs> yeah, I figured you'd put me on the spot. I'm scrambling. About. I was uh, I was trying to say that as slowly as possible so you could uh, <laughs> so you, you could look look it up. Um, I, was, I, was to think, I think our draw deadlines on our website are forward facing, meaning you do not have to be a paid Hunt and Fool member. So what I would do is go to huntandfool.com and then under our research tab, there's application deadlines for the entire Western state draw system. So Perfect. I would point you there because um, in many cases, the states have multiple draws. So they might have a, like Arizona has a pronghorn and an elk draw that happens early and then their deer and sheep is later. So yeah, probably too long to run through on the podcast, but go to huntful.com and check out on that research tab. You will see it. I just verified it's, it's in front of the paywall. And you know what, even if it's not not in front of the paywall, uh, just a reminder from last episode, and uh, I'll remind everyone again at the end of this episode, but if you use code TWI60, you can sign up for a 60-day free digital membership to Hunt and Fool, so you can uh, access all of those goodies just in time for application season and really see the value of what you guys offer, so Make sure you guys check that out. Uh, so now that uh, we've exhausted everyone on sheep, might as well just open the wallets even further and and scrape the bottom and and talk about applying for hunt and goat as well. Perfect. One of my one of my also favorites. So ring ring, hello. This is Hunt and Fool. Hi, my name's Sam. Uh, I I'm not married to a doctor, but I still want to shoot a goat. Um, and, and, you know, the, the last one I shot on my uncle's farm, he didn't really appreciate that too much. So I figured <laughs> let's go with, uh, one of the other ones <laughs> at the top of this podcast. When you said we're going to hunt sheep and goats, I just wanted to clarify, we're not talking on the farm, we're talking <laughs> mountain goats and wild sheep. <laughs> and it's, you know, it is really funny because I, you know, you, you don't realize that, you know, for me, I remember when I first started, that's immediately what you think. Yep. It's like that they're going to, it's going to look like, you know, your average sheep on the farm or your average goat on the farm. And, you know, I've, I've kind of to the point now where I forget that people think about that. And I'll talk with my friends that don't hunt and they're like, sheep, goats, really? What do you do? Walk up with a brick and hit them over the head when they, with some hay out in your hand? Like what? And I'm like, no, it's a very different experience than, than what you'd expect. But. Yes, yeah, so uh, definitely not uh, not Uncle Jim, Uncle Jim's goat on the farm, or the kind you see at the petting zoo. Yeah, I, I, I'll dive in a little bit. The, the good news about goat hunts is that you know, particularly if if you have a a good budget, there are a lot of guaranteed tags for a lot less money than a sheep hunt. So if you're dying to go hunt the high country. Um, and get it, get that in your system, then, you know, you've got, a, of course, Canada's closed right now with COVID, but you've got a ton of options in Canada. Uh, it will reopen. I'm confident of that in spite of the vortex we seem to be trapped in right now. And then Alaska as well. And a lot of those tags are literally, quote unquote, over the counter or just acquired by purchasing either direct or through your outfitter. So, you know, in those hunts, Robert, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, you know, you might find if you really shop hard and find the right, you know, good bargain, uh, AKA maybe an outfitter that's going to make you pack your camp to the top of Mount Everest and practically kill you in the process. Mm. You know, you might start around seven grand somewhere in there. And then they, you know, the sky's the limit with accommodations and style, et cetera, but up to, you know, 10, 
10, five or so you could, yeah, there's a lot of inventory available. I think, is that right, Robert? No, I, I totally agree. I mean, you know, 7,000, you know, probably to 12 is going to be, I'd say your average costs. You can get into some areas that, you know, are like your, your boat hunts or hunts for absolute, you know, giants. And then you're going to get, you know, a little bit steeper than that. But, you know, for the most part, you know, that's kind of what your price is up there. And, you know, a lot of times when you look at uh, drawing a tag in the West, say in Wyoming or Idaho, where it go tags over $2,000, say you hire an outfitter because it's not something you want to do on your own, you're right there at that same price as Alaska and you can guarantee it. So, you you know, a lot of times we tell guys, you know, if it's something you're wanting to go guided, maybe just look at going north, like you said, to Alaska. Um, if you're more of a self-guided guy, then yeah, the draw in the West is definitely, you know, something for you. I mean... And let's face it, who doesn't want to go hunt up in Alaska? I mean, come nope. on. Like, just throwing that out there. Like, Alaska, yeah, gosh, that's like the dream hunt right there for anything. No, for sure. And Alaska goat hunts, you know, have a wide range of experiences, you know, from stuff, like I said, where you're basically going to kill yourself getting from the coast up to goat habitat to, you know, more more reasonable habitat and whatnot. So you can kind of pick your poison there a little bit. One thing I will say, if you are, you know, debating an outfitted goat hunt, you're not getting any younger and these hunts are not going to get any cheaper. That's what I'll <laughs> say right out of the gate. Um, yeah. They, you know, we, we see prices continue to climb steadily. We thought COVID might impact that negatively. Uh, uh-uh. If anything, prices went up and we're going to continue to see that, I think for the ne- foreseeable future. So say, uh, you know, say I'm I'm not ready to quite fork out that dough. I wanna I wanna start putting my hat in the ring and the draw. What uh, what am I looking at? So to give you a quick rundown of the West, we got you know mountain goats where non-residents could be applying and hunting them in Washington, Oregon, um, Nevada. Right now, it's resident only, but again, it's right on that bubble where it could go either way. Utah has non-resident tags. Colorado, Wyoming, uh, Montana, and Idaho. So you know that's kind of where you're looking for tags. Um, so your next thing is, do I want? Am I applying for those units already? If I'm applying for Utah for sheep, I'm going to throw an extra 10 bucks at it to put in for the goat. Um, If I go in Oregon, it's the same thing. I'm applying for sheep. It's an extra eight bucks. I'm going to put in for goat. There's no point system there. There's only two mountain goat hunts available. You know, Washington's expensive, but Washington and Oregon have probably some of the biggest goats in the lower 48. Um, You know, Idaho, they're going to give roughly four to five non-resident tags. Same thing. If you go for goats, you can't apply for sheep. I'd say, you know, on average, your draw odds are roughly one in 50. And we come up with those odds and it could vary depending on if there's four tags or five based on total number of people that apply as non-residents for goats divided by the number of permits usually issued. So, I mean, that's kind of what you'd, you'd expect your draw odds there. Um, Oregon and Washington, they're going to be way worse than that. Wyoming, again, there's no points for goats there. So everybody's equal. You know, there's really three units that uh, we recommend guys apply for. And, you know, like unit three has an earlier hunt and a late hunt, late hunts, you know, kind of sub it's a subunit inside of unit three, you know, those are typically in that, you know, one in 30 to one in 40 type odds too. So not bad, especially when we're talking about, you know, sheep odds being so horrible, you know, you start looking at Idaho and Wyoming, those odds aren't too bad. Um, Colorado, it's the same thing we talked about with sheep. You're going to give them money for three years. The fourth year, your name's going to go in the hat. You do have an archery only tag. Um, And then Montana, Montana gives a tremendous amount of goat tags to non-residents along with Colorado. Uh, Wyoming's been up in theirs as well. So those would be the states that I would kind of be focusing on. If I'm already buying a license in any of those states, I'm going to throw a goat on because it's you know fairly inexpensive to do it. The, the ones that have points. Um, if I was looking to best odds just to maybe try to draw a goat tag, I'd probably be looking at Wyoming and Idaho because there is no point system there. Everyone's equal every year. You have to upfront the money. Um, the only thing about Wyoming that I don't like is Wyoming has a, a wilderness law, which was established a long time ago. And it's a, it's a law that not a lot of us you know really agree on. But essentially, I can't go and hunt the wilderness areas in Wyoming without an outfitter. Um, you know, it's a law they have for safety reasons that uh, we can't go up there and hunt that stuff. So if it is an area in a wilderness area, you have to hire an outfitter or have a Wyoming resident go with you. And uh, if you hire an outfitter, you know, you're going to be paying, you know, a little bit more money for that. So 
they're that unit three that has the better draw odds is typically it's all wilderness where the mm-hmm. other units one and two you know you don't, wouldn't need an out three there you could go on your own so those are my two favorite states is wyoming and idaho for no points you know everybody's got a fair shot you know the other states like utah and oregon if i'm already applying there i'm going to throw some money at it washington even though it has giant goats i'm not applying for it unless it's a kid. Um, my 12 year old drew a goat tag there. Um, you know, and it was one of the toughest goat hunts there. It was on the peninsula. It was called the conflict reduction goat hunt. And, uh, like that year, I think they gave six tags and only two people were successful. And one of them was my 12 year old boy, you know, nice. thankfully I had a, a buddy Calvin Halliday that went with me and he was a stud and we were able to get Connor up there and Connor killed a great goat. So, Again, that my son, who's a Montana resident, paid fifty. Well, I paid fifty five dollars for that tag. If he drew a tag in Montana, it'd be one hundred twenty five because he's a resident. So, I got a, as much as I've bad lost Washington my entire career working in the hunting industry. They gave my my son a, a goat tag, so I can't <laughs> bad mouth him as much. <laughs> and so, just because I I want to be selfish, let's talk a little bit about uh, Montana resident uh, goat tags. What am I, what am I looking, what am I looking at? What are my options here? So here's the thing. You live in Bozeman. So you're looking north at the Bridgers and you're like, I'm going to hunt there. It's giant goats. Well, you're never going to draw <laughs> even as a resident <laughs> because the odds are horrible. So um, if you look at like, you know, Jared's wife, Ruthie, my wife, Amy, me and Jared, um, we've all drawn goat tags in Montana, you know, and it's because we look at units that are closer to the park. They give uh, a, a large amount of tags and, you know, we're willing to hunt that rougher, nasty country and we're willing to drag our wives through it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's if you're a Montana resident, I would be looking at the stuff around the park. Um, you know, I drew my goat tag back in 04. I shot a nice billy with a bow. I know Jared killed him with a bow. And, uh, you know, I'm already back to, I don't know, six or seven points. And, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to draw two, maybe three goat tags in my lifetime, you know, if I can keep myself in shape. Um, because I'm willing to hunt grizzly infested, nasty country. Or most guys are like, I want to hunt you know, the Bridgers, or I want to hunt Square Butte, or, you know, I want to hunt, you know, one of these other real popular units. So I'd rather be against 30 other hunters, you know, competing, you know, in some nasty country and just go goat hunting, than sit on my hands my whole life and wait for the greatest tag in, in the state, the Bridgers. You know, and I'll tell you, like, I have no problem hunting grizzly country, not because I'm especially brave, but mostly just because I'm especially stupid and have no (laughs) internal sense of warning. There's a reason, uh, (laughs) there's a reason I do (laughs) do the things I do and it's not, and it's not bravery. Uh, (laughs) Well, we're, we're all different and like grizzlies. I know, you know, they don't bother me. I've lived here for a long time. I respect them like crazy. I make sure I have a clean camp. I make sure my camp's not an area where they're going to use as a travel path. Um, But I won't swim in the ocean because I'm so afraid of sharks. So we all have, you know, (laughs) what bothers us. But yeah, I'd sleep in a room with a grizzly before I'd swim in the ocean with one shark. Oh, that's funny. From talk again, talking to a guy that grew up surfing in California, I find that hilarious. Um, (laughs) <laughs> especially yeah, because a kid that grew up in nevada in the desert so. yeah i was gonna say especially coming from like my friends in california and like one of the first thing they always ask well aren't you aren't you like terrified of bears i'm like no not really i mean but i digress so um we kind of went through uh what are we looking at budget wise if we're you know applying for applying for goat it's really similar in that, you know, um, like Robert pointed out, you take a state like Utah, if you're already applying, it's 10 extra dollars, right? We have very few clients that say, I'm all about Mountain Go. That's all I want to apply for. And I'm going to do a goat strategy. But if you did a quote unquote goat strategy, again, you know, you're going to need to be in five. Well, you could for 400 bucks, you know, you could pick off some states like Montana, where it's just a little over a hundred dollars. Is that right, Robert? I think it's just a little over a hundred for non-residents to apply exactly. for go in Montana. Um, you know, and then, yeah, again, the, the state, the states are leaner, um, you know, but like Robert pointed out, you got to front all the tag fees in Wyoming, even though the draw odds are quite good respectively. And it is a good option. We do encourage goat fanatics to apply there. But, you know, your credit card's going to get hit for 2200 bucks and change um, until you find out whether you drew or not. 
So, you know, you could probably, if you really wanted to be cheap, like, you know, oh, and then the raffles are another good option. I mean, Robert has has uh, alluded to that with the sheep. There's even less interest in goat tags out there. Um, the so the prices are the same as all those raffle prices he rattled off for sheep. Uh, for the most part, they're not identical necessarily every single state. But you know, where there are goat raffles, the odds are always better than for sheep raffles. So um, that's another great way to go. Throw a few hundred dollars. You might throw a hundred dollars at. Montana and a couple hundred dollars in raffles. Um, or like I said, if you're already going to hunt Idaho anyway, um, you are going to have to front the tag fees, but the odds are pretty good. And your non-refundable hunting license is already covered because you're going to go chase an elk or a deer or a bear or something like that there. You know, and, and I've mentioned this on, on I think, prior episodes. I, I can't remember if we talked about this in in the uh, our uh, draw episode, but one thing I've I've learned to do with, with my tag applications is in, I'm not one to like tell people you should open an additional credit card and put yourself into debt. But (laughs) one thing I've learned is I, if I'm applying for a bunch of States that refund tag costs, like you have to put them up front, but they refund it. If you don't draw, I have a credit card. That's like super low interest or it, you know, gives special deals on interest, things like that. And that is solely reserved for my application fees. Um, you know, that way I'm, if I pay the minimum, you know, pay the minimum on it, I don't get really hit with any fees. The money eventually comes back for, you know, 90% of those. And I don't use it for anything else. So I'm not dealing with, with other charges. I know what's on there. It's literally my refundable application fee credit card. That is solely what it's used for. And for some people, if you can find the right card for that, it's not, it's not a bad strategy. That way, yeah, you're, you're still putting out some money, but you're paying the minimum on that card. And then obviously if you draw, you'll want to pay it off at that point. But, um, that's just something I've kind of, I I've kind of started doing or been doing the past few years. And it's been very, it's, it's been a, a lot easier on the bank account since then. Yeah, no, we, all of us personally do that. Of course. I mean, look at like Robert has been really religious about applying his whole family more so than even I was it's a big number every year that's, that's out there floating. So we, we typically encourage people to do that. And we do that personally as well. Um, one thing I wanted to mention too, a little uh, shameless plug for this digital membership uh, tool set that if you, you know, if you do decide to take advantage of the 60 day trial period, first of all, our draw odds calculator is really incredible. It runs thousands of simulations. We get, we acquire full data sets from the states so that we understand the point application uh, information at every point level and every hunter choice. And where, like Robert mentioned again in Nevada, you look at, they look at five choices before they look at the next applicant. Makes it, and they square your bonus points in the draw system. So it makes it very complicated. Our draw, our draw odds calculator is second to none. You, in states that do have points, you can actually put your points in physically and it'll calculate your draw odds at your point level. Um, so that's a tool you'll want to take advantage of to sort of make some of these decisions on your own. Do I want to apply for Idaho goat or Wyoming or, you know, a, another state that has a point system. And the other tool um, that I think is super valuable in that process is totally drawn a blank. Congratulations. I've got no sales skills. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jared Lyle's personal cell phone number. <laughs> yeah. We all uh, have that linked on the show notes page under social media. Feel free to uh, reach out to him. All of you right around that six o'clock dinner mark. Uh, you will, <laughs> yeah. uh, make sure to take all your calls. I remember what it is. It's not my personal cell number. Um, <laughs> And we talked about this last time, the draw cost calculator. Mm-hmm. We talked about that a little bit. It's actually a free tool on our website. Highly recommend jumping on there. It's, we are going to steal some of your data. We're going to get your name and your email. We, you have to put in a valid email if you actually want the results emailed to yourself. Comes back in two PDFs, great form, broken out by state, what your upfront costs are, what your out-of-pocket sunk costs are. Um, and then um, also the actual strategy document itself. When, after you've selected your Arizona elk, bison, javelina, deer, sheep, etc. So it's a great tool. It's free. You should play around on it. That'll help you really determine your annual budget. Awesome. Well, is there anything else we need to touch on for GOAT? I, I want to just kind of circle back around real quick on that. Okay. So um, 
goats, we said, you know, you're going to do it, say 7,500 bucks um, to go to Alaska, kind of bare minimum. Um, let's say we decide to tell, help a guy put in, you know, for a couple of these states and he's kind of all in on goat and he's dropping, you know, 500 bucks a year, non-refundable to apply for goats. Um, you know, in literally five years, he's paid a third of what his Alaska hunt would be. Um, so sometimes if a guy really just wants to go on a goat hunt, it may be better just to book that goat hunt and kind of do it on your timeline than where if you were to draw it, because, you know, you get into these, you know, draws a couple of years, um, you know, so it's kind of that fine line. You need to decide for yourself, Hey, do I go to Alaska and I do the hunt or do I apply for it? Or do I just kick in the States that don't cost me much when I'm already applying there. And that's different. When we look at sheep, you know, you can go to Mexico and I'm just going to throw a number of 60,000 out for a desert. You know, you may be able to find a reservation hunt or a, 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 a gov tag, you know, in, you know, say Wyoming for 80 grand. Most times there's a lot more than that, but I'm just going to throw that number out there. You could apply for 20 years and you're never going to get close to that. So that's where sheep super intensive. You need to be focused. You need to, you know, apply in every draw you can. You know, the hunt full, we we buy full price sheep hunts and give them away. We've given away desert tags, we've given away doll tags, stone tags. So I mean, that kind of thing, you know, those are just extra tickets you can put your name in the hat. So I recommend, you know, you gotta go full tilt across the board for sheep because it's a big number when you want to start buying tags. We've had guys call us up and they're guys that are married to a doctor and they say, <laughs> Hey, I want to kill my grand slam in one year. Well, hey, bud, 350,000 bucks, let's do it. You know, you know, sometimes it could be down to 250,000. We've helped guys book their entire, you know, their, their, you know, slam out in one year. So, but I mean, that's the thing. You've got a big checkbook, a lot of things. But if you're a working guy, you really got to work the draws. You got to focus on the draws and, you know, pay attention. And wherever you can, even if you start out with just two or three states and every year you add one state, you know, and, and just kind of, you know, it's a long-term goal. You know, when we help guys build strategies for, antelope deer and elk we usually do a one-year plan a five-year plan a 10-year plan and a lifetime plan sheep mm -hmm. is lifetime it's not a five-year goal or 10-year goal it's a lifetime plan you know you get into it and you're hoping to pull that tag you know before they put you <laughs> in the dirt you're racing the clock but all righty um well i will uh i will make sure to link there's a the couple articles a few things we talked about gonna make sure to link to that on the show notes page link to those tools that we discussed and just as a reminder to everyone, make sure head over to huntfool.com, use code TWI60 to get that 60 day free trial. If nothing else, just learn what's so valuable about the tool, use it and abuse it for this application season and learn everything you can, build that application strategy, get in there and reach out to the guys. Uh, Robert, Jared, thank you again so much for uh, for hopping on, sitting down with me. Thank you so much, Sam. Really appreciate it, bud. Yeah, and and also something else we're gonna link up. We filmed for the Hunt and Full Advisor series on YouTube, my son's desert sheep hunt, and uh, you can check that out. It was super fun. You know, grandfather, my father in law, me, and my son and Brady went down to New Mexico or Arizona and had a great time. Put a big ram on the ground. Awesome. Yes, we'll definitely add that to the show notes page for people to check out. But awesome. Well, we will do this again shortly for, uh, I want everyone to keep an eye out for the rest of these species episodes, but thanks for hopping on guys. Thanks Sam. Have a great night. Thank you. All right, y'all that'll do it for this episode of the wild initiative. Another big thank you to Jared and Robert for hopping on and sharing their very extensive knowledge with us. Make sure y'all check out the show notes page at the wild initiative.com. Get links to everything we talked about in today's episode check out those videos, uh, check out the, the articles we talked about, and make sure you utilize that code TWI60 to get that 60-day free trial for the Hunt and Fool. Listen, y'all, even if you just use it for this application season, there is no downside to this. It will help you figure out your application strategy and really give you the best chance of drawing tags and help you utilize your money for these applications in the best possible way. Also make sure y'all keep an eye out for the rest of these species episodes coming soon. 
Uh, hoping to get these all knocked out soon. We're going to be doing moose, pronghorn, elk, and mule deer. So uh, get ready. It is application season. So that'll do it for this week, y'all. Looking forward to next time. But until then, I hope this episode inspired you to get involved, get outdoors, and plan your initiative for the wild. Thank you for listening to The Wild Initiative. Please take a moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes or Stitcher and head on over to thewildinitiative.com to get show notes, check out the blog, gear discounts, other podcasts from The Wild Initiative family, and more. 